If you skip changing your differential or transfer case fluid, you could be setting your drivetrain up for catastrophic failure. Today we're breaking down why those fluids matter, how often to change them, and how differential actually work. And as example, I'll be changing the rear differential fluid on this 2014 BMW 535D with 155,000 miles. And the reason is the grinding noise from the rear of the car as well as the little clunk when you switch the gears or switch from the drive to reverse. But as you can see here, from transmission to differential, the drive shaft have a bit excessive movement. And when you're inside of the car, you have that little butt kick. Unfortunately, this is a permanent damage, but to extend the life and release the stress from the gears, we're going to replace the fluid because I don't think it ever been replaced. So let's start from the theory and flyover of how this component works and why do you need to replace that oil in a transfer case, in differential and transmission as well. So why do you need to change differential fluid? Essentially your differential is what allows the wheels on your axle to rotate at different speed, like when you're turning. Inside it's packed with gears bearings and sometimes clutches that takes a beating under the torque and the gear oil inside it's not immortal over the time it breaks down from heat gets contaminated with metal shavings and even absorb moisture especially if you drive through the off-road conditions neglecting it leads to gear wear grinding and noisy operation as well as slipping more toward the transfer case but uh, the final output is death of the component or basically failure which could cost you from thousand dollars and anywhere from three or three plus thousand dollars and the gear oil uh, it's a lot cheaper from anywhere from 50 to 150 dollars uh, for the fluid itself and this is still quite expensive but if you buy it from the third party manufacturer you could save quite a bit of money for example the quart of oil from the liquid moly cost me like $25, particularly this car have open differential, so it's a bit cheaper. You need just a regular gear oil. But some of them actually carry a uh, limited slip differential or LSD. And we're also gonna cover that in a minute. Meanwhile, if you have all wheel drive car, you're gonna have a transfer case, which is another point. And why do you need to change the oil in the transfer case? Because it contains a lot of gears, maybe chain and maybe some clutch disc and all of those mechanical components submerge in transfer case fluid to keep it cool and smooth but like everything else heat friction and age breaks the fluid down and that means less lubrication and more wear which is you really don't want to have and if you're driving through water and mud the contamination can get in your system through the vent tube, turn your fluids into mess of sludge and rust soup. And neglect and transfer case can cause grinding, binding, sleeping and uh, even full oil dry failure. And the repairs isn't cheap as well. So we get it. All of the fluids that in the car have expiration. Uh, for example, for the differential um, front or the rear, it's going to be 30 to 60,000 miles. For the transfer case, it's going to be 30 to 50 and same for the transmission 30 to 50,000 miles every 50,000 miles you're gonna need to replace trans transmission transfer case and differentials if you plan on keeping that car for as long as it's gonna be alive or if you wanted to keep the car for as long as you're gonna be alive on the other hand manufacturer is stating that most of the cars will have lifetime fluids in their differential transfer case transmission but here's the kicker lifetime it's a time of manufacturer's warranty if you had a 30,000 miles or 50,000 miles that's all what they care they doesn't give a shit what happened after that also as a side note if you tow something on the car if you go through the off-road or just put extra strain on the drivetrain, make sure to replace the oil sooner on the schedule. So for example, if the limit is th from 30 to 50,000 miles, do it on 30,000 miles. But if you're casually driving, uh, you can go on a higher side. So 50 to 60,000 miles, you should be fine there. And before replacing the rear differential oil on this BMW, let's go through the differential types and how they work. So first one is open differential. 
This is the most basic type. It allows each wheel to spin at different speed when cornering. But if one wheel loses traction, like on ice, it sends all the power to the slip inside. The next one is limited slip differential or LSD. LSDs fix the problem of open differential. They limit how much one wheel can spin faster than the other. Useful in performance cars and trucks, offering traction without fully locking the axles. And generally those look exactly the same. For example, this car. The rear differential that installed on this car will look the same between open differential and LSD differential. But how do you determine which one you have? So they're a really easy way of figuring out whether you have a limited slip differential or open differential. You simply need to jack it up the rear end of the car, set it in the neutral, in the open differential if you're going to be spinning, for example, the passenger side wheel a clockwise rotation, the opposite side will be turning counterclockwise, so opposite direction. In LSD or the limited slip differential, if you're going to be turning this wheel clockwise, the other wheel will also be re repeating the movement of this wheel. So basically you'll know this, that you have a limited slip differential, which is quite easy to figure out. The next one is locking differential. A locker forces both wheels to rotate at the same speed no matter what. This one is pretty much the same as open, but with mechanical lock. And it's amazing for off-roading where traction is unpredictable, but not great for turning on pavement. And the difference between lock and differential and LSD is quite big. Lock and differential will, base, will physically lock both wheels and they're gonna be, no matter what force is gonna be applied to which wheel, they both gonna be rotating in the same speed. Whereas the limited slip differential, there is enough torque applied on one wheel, the other wheel will struggle to turn, which is kind of the idea of something more automated as uh, in comparison to same um, lock differential. And the last one is electronic active differential. Modern vehicles often use computer control systems that simulate differential behavior using the sensors and electronic clutches. This offers real-time control and safety, but they still need fresh fluid. So there are a few different parts or the crucial part that you need to follow before you drain the fluid from differential or the transfer case. First one, you have to level your car need to stay flat to the ground the same way as it does when you drive it or uh, uh, in this particular case it seems like i did a pretty good job the next one or actually before that step you need to research what oil your car needs and like i said transfer case differential probably going to use different fluids this particular car have a open differential which is require regular gear oil some of the oil will have a ls sign on it or limited slip um, additive which is specifically for the limited slip differential beside ordering the oil you might want it to buy a drain plug and a fill plug as well because some of them are one-time use if not, make sure to order the crash washers as well. As you can see, this particular differential doesn't have a drain plug, so you're gonna need to keep that in mind. But if yours does, I would highly suggest you to start with the fill plug, because if you're going to mess it up the wrench hole, um, and if you snap it, it's gonna be a fiasco. So for this particular differential, I'm gonna need to remove the fill plug and pump out the oil that is inside which is using the spritz or some kind of pump. I'm going to use my 14 mil hex and break the nut loose. That was pretty easy. Now I can get my container, make sure to wear gloves because this fluid is pretty nasty overall. This particular plug doesn't have a uh, crash washer but it does have a uh, some sort of o-ring so uh, that's why you wanted to replace them and right away i can't see like how dirty oil is because this bolt is not just black it's actually contained a whole bunch of materials on it let's pump it out i mean it's not that horrible but it's bad Hmm. 
do that as much as I can suck it up. So let's see if I'll be able to use that bottle and squeeze it in. And basically we filled in the differential with the fluid until it started dripping. In our case, this quart of fluid filled the differential just right up. Get a new plug. And now we can torque that with 44 newtonometers. Okay. Ready to go. So as you can see, those not just the hidden boxes under the car that doesn't require any attention whatsoever. And they are need your input. So make sure to keep in mind that you have something under your car that needs an oil change, not just an engine. Every single fluid need to be changed at some point because it loses characteristic. And especially the one that require to maintain the friction between the components, whether it's clutches or the physical gears. They can be really strong, but they are strong for the reason, because they pass in a lot of force through them and you want to make sure they are going to be working as intended. So it's a good idea to plan for replacing those fluids somewhere in the future or maybe sooner than later. If you can't find a proper fluid online, you can call your dealer. It's always an option. They wouldn't mind to tell you that they do have that fluid for replacement, despite its lifetime. If you can't do it yourself, call your shop and ask them how much it costs. Generally, all of these parts are accessible on most cars. Some cars will have more troubles to reaching them, especially like sedans or the smaller one. For example, 3 Series will have a, uh, a bit um, tighter access, but it still will have access. For example, like this BMW X5 that I replaced the front and rear differential as well as the transfer case. It all worked well. So if you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a like, subscribe and leave me a comment. I will surely reply to it, and whether it's gonna be a good one or bad one. And uh, yeah, that's it for today. Bye bye ski and I'll see you ski in the next one ski.